So in this video, I'm going to talk about second order linear equations. Uh, so let's write down a general form for those. And you'll notice that um, these form a more general class. They kind of include, oh, well, not the way I'm going to write this down, but in, in principle, they include if the coefficient on the y double prime term was zero, these would include first order equations in a sense. But when we divide it out, we have a y double prime plus some coefficient that might depend on t multiplying the y prime and some q of t multiplying the y term. And we can have a g of t on the right hand side. So that is the general form of a second order linear differential equation. And now, because we have two derivatives, an initial value problem, an IVP, requires two conditions. Now, if it's an initial value problem, you can make both of those conditions, or you do make both of those conditions, at the origin. So you say y of 0 is equal to some, or it doesn't have to be y at 0. It could be y at 1 or y at 2. But you have to have a condition at one end of an interval where you're looking for the solution, and another condition for the derivative at the um, beginning of the interval. So I have a y of 0 is equal to y naught, and a y prime of 0 is equal to v naught. So I use v there just to keep in mind like velocity is one typical interpretation, or, or position of, uh, is an interpretation for y, so that would be a velocity. OK, so um, as with first order equations, we have homogeneous equations, and that means g is the zero function, and we have non-homogeneous. And that in that case we have g non-zero. Same language, same interpretation as before, but we just have a second order derivative added to our left hand side. Okay, so what we're going to spend a bunch of time working on here uh, is um, first we're going to talk about homogeneous second order. equations with constant coefficients. And we're going to be able to say a lot about these. In fact, we can kind of characterize them completely. So what does that look like? That's an a y double prime plus b y prime plus c y equal 0. Now, um, we could. Uh, have written it with a equal 1, but this gives us a little bit more generality than putting a 1 in front of the y double prime term because a could be 0 and then we actually end up with a first order equation. So that's what I meant before that a second order equation in this general, this more general form than what I wrote above, uh, which I shouldn't have called the general form I guess, um, is uh, includes uh, first orders as well. Okay, so uh, what can we say about these? Um, well, so I haven't actually shown it yet, but um, anytime you have a homogeneous linear equation, you have this property that uh, if you have two solutions, a sum of those solutions is also a solution, and you have the property that multiplying one of the solutions by a constant will also be a solution. So let me write that down. So if if y1 and y2 are solutions, and uh, let's see, I'm running out of letters here, a, b, c, d, e, f, g, hmm, all of these are something, let's call it d. And d is a real number, then 1 y1 plus y2 is also a solution. Okay. 
and 2 d times y1 or times d2 is also a solution. And this follows directly from the properties of linearity. Um, and so I'm not going to go through that here, but um, maybe I'll add a video to our collection of videos on linearity earlier. I, I might do that. Okay, so um, so let's let's plug in and check. We just I want to see it directly here, and it sort of illustrates the principle, but not through the original definition of linearity. Um, but let's see. So how do I know that? Let's say um, let's do the first one first. So check i, our little one, Roman numeral one. So what we have to do is write out what we know. So we know that y1 is a solution. So we know that a1, ay1 double prime plus by1 prime plus cy is equal to zero, because that's what it means for y1 to be a solution. And we know that a y2 prime double prime plus b y1 y2 prime plus c y2, oh, should be a one there, is equal to zero. So we know both of those things because we've assumed y1 and y2 are solutions, so they satisfy the equation. So what we'd like to conclude is that their sum also satisfies the equation. Well, to show that the sum adds, uh, satisfies the equation, let's mess around with the equations a little bit and see if we can get an expression that tells us that y1 plus y2 does satisfy the equation. So let's just actually add up the two left-hand sides and the two right-hand sides of the equation. So on the left-hand side, ay1 double prime plus ay2 double prime added together gives me, I'm going to factor out the a, and I get this expression, a times y1 double prime plus y2 double prime, and then plus b times y1 prime plus y2 double prime, sorry, single prime, plus c, y1 plus y2. So that's adding up the left-hand sides, all the pieces on the left-hand side. And now I'm going to add up the two pieces on the right-hand side, 0 and 0, and that's equal to 0. And what we just ended up with right here is a statement that y1 plus y2 does in fact satisfy the equation because this is, once again, the original equation we're talking about. So that's why the sum satisfies the equation. And now let's check 2. So um, as, it, as before, we still know that a y1 uh, double prime plus b y1 prime plus c y1 satisfies the equation. That's equal to 0. So now let's take, I'm going to put a little 1 next to this, take equation, take 1 and multiply through. D. And when I do that, what do we get? Well, I get D times A1 double prime plus D times B1 1 prime plus D times C Y1 equal D times 0 is 0. So that's just straightforward multiplying it through. That's just manipulating the equation we already know is true. Let me now put this group this in a way because this D here can be here, right? Multiplication, you can flip the order in which you do multiplication. So I can write this as a times d y1 double prime. In fact, not only can I interchange a and d, but let me interchange the derivative as well. So I'm going to move the a out in front, and I'm going to multiply by, and now I'm going to put brackets about d y1 and take a double prime on the outside. And this, just rearranging the order, I can do this because of linearity of derivatives. And so then I can add to that a reordered version of this one. And so what you see here is a statement of the original differential equation. And I'm going to just kind of uh, block it out. Let's see, where's my highlighter? I'm just going to block it out. So what does the equation ask you to do? It asks you to put in of y here and see if that comes out to zero. So for y1, we know that when you dump that in here, here, and here, you get zero. And for y2, we know, we're assuming, 
that you also get zeros when you add uh, when you plug y twos in here, here, and here. By adding those two equations, we found that a thing like this. Oh, aha! There's one little thing I didn't do. I should have taken to complete this. I should have taken these primes and I can move them to the outside of the brackets because when you take derivatives in and out of the brackets of a sum like that, you just put the derivative on each one separately. So I do one more step here that I forgot and I put the prime on the outside. And now you can see that's more clear that I've just plugged in y1 plus y2 into each of the spots where the y was in the original equation over here. And I've done the same thing here. I've manipulated the equation so it looks like I've just dumped a dy1 a dy2 and a, sorry, a dy1, a dy1, and a dy1 into the three spots where the y appears in the original equation. So what I can conclude from this is that y1 plus y2 and dy1 are solutions. Okay, so, oh, we're getting a little long, so let's see. Um, yeah, so I think I'll call it there as an introduction to uh, second order differential equations. In fact, this was more uh, about the linearity and what we call superposition of solutions. Um, so I will continue with more on second order uh, linear differential equations in the next video.